Order. I remind honourable members that there have been some changes to normal practice in order to support the new hybrid arrangements. Timings of debates have been amended to allow technical arrangements to be made for the next debate. There will also be suspensions between each debate. And I remind members participating physically and virtually that they must arrive from the start of debates in Westminster Hall. Members are expected to remain for the entire debate. I must also remind members participating virtually that they must leave their camera on for the duration of the debate and that they will be visible at all times, both to each other and to us in the Boothroyd room. If members attending virtually have any technical problems, they should meet email Westminster Hall Clark's email address, which is Westminster Hall Clark's all one word at parliament.uk. Members attending physically should please clean their spaces before they use them and as they leave the room. I'd also remind members that Mr Speaker stated that masks should be worn in Westminster Hall. Martin Dare to move the motion. Thank you, Mrs Cummins. I beg to move that this House has considered e-petition 564582 on research into motor neuron disease. MND is a rare disease which is sadly all too common. It is the most common neural, neurodegenerative disease of midlife and many younger people are also affected. It is currently a terminal and incurable pro progressive condition. Progression is rapid with one third of people dying within a year of diagnosis. Because people with the condition generally die so quickly, only 5,000 people in the UK will live with the disease at any one time. However, MND is not rare. One in every 300 people across all communities will develop MND in their lifetime. And about 200,000 of the current UK population will die of MND unless effective treatments are found. It's diagnosed in 200 Scots every year and more than 1,500 people in the UK. Currently, the only drug available directly to affect MND is called Riluzole or Rilutec, but I'm told it has limitations. So it's hardly surprising that the petition achieved over 110,000 signatures. The petition calls on the government to significantly increase targeted research funding for motor neuron disease and in particular seeks new investment of £50 million over five years to kickstart an MND research institute, which the petitioners argue would lead to a better, faster and more definitive research outcomes and hope for those with MND. In its response, the UK government recognised the immediate challenges faced by people with motor neuron disease and reiterated its commitment to supporting MND research which is welcome, and I hope gives some encouragement that common ground may be found to take this issue forward. I will return to the government response to the petition in more detail shortly with some questions I hope the Minister can address when responding to today's debate. But first, I would like to pay tribute to the amazing work carried out by the petitioners and those charities and individuals involved in tackling MND on a daily basis. George Wilson Doddy Weir created the petition and is one of rugby's most recognisable personalities. Earning 61 caps for Scotland during a successful playing career, he represented the British and Irish Lions on their successful tour to South Africa in 1997 and won championships with his two club sides, Melrose and Newcastle Falcons. In June 2017, Doddy six months after receiving his diagnosis, revealed he was suffering from motor neuron disease. From then, his mantra has been, I've just got to crack on. Five months on from going public, Doddy and his trustees launched and registered the charity, My Name's Doddy Foundation, with a shared vision of a world free of MND. The number five is special for the foundation. It features on the foundation's name, and as a reference to Doddy's playing number for his clubs and the jersey he wore when he earned his 61 caps for Scotland. On meeting Doddy, albeit virtually, last week, I was struck by the positivity and the energy he continues to have four and a half years on from his diagnosis. Doddy is not the only high-profile personality to succumb, but face up to this terrible disease. The most recognisable scientist of modern times, Stephen Hawking, defied it for 55 years. 
Rob Burrow, another rugby great, was diagnosed with motor neuron disease in December 2019, just two years after ending his playing career by captaining Leeds to a record extending eight Super League Grand Final. He described the disease as follows. First, it comes for your voice, then it takes your legs, it tries to rob you of your breath, but it can't sap your spirit. Inspirational as these people are, however, does not portray the difficulties of living with MND. Everyone living with MND is inspirational and understands what is holding back progression in the development of effective treatment and a cure is lack of targeted funding. I've heard testimonies from Emma, a young mother diagnosed with MND at 37 years old, who can no longer stand, and David, diagnosed in 2012, who accepts he is lucky due to the slow progression of how MND affects him. Both consider themselves lucky to still have a voice. Indeed, everyone I met during my research into today's debate is excited about the progress made thus far. But they also know that MND research is disparate and now needs to be targeted. I urge the government not to dampen the growing expectancy that currently exists among the MND community and meet the requests of these petitioners. If I may now return to the official government response to the petition, I would like to go through it in some detail to comment and question the government upon it. The response stated, over the past five years, the government has spent 54 million on MND research through the National Institute for Health Research and UK Research Innovation via the Medical Research Council. Yet according to a written parliamentary answer of the 14th of January, this year, NIHR funded no MND-related product projects during 2019-20. Can the Minister provide details of any MND-related projects or programmes that receive funding from the NIHR over the past five years? The same answer detailed five million of MND-related projects funded by the MRC during 2019-20. Can the Minister provide details of any other MND-related projects or programmes that have received funding from the MRC over the past five years? Indeed, analysis carried out by MNDA, MND Scotland and My Name's Doddy Foundation shows that the figure of 54 million government spending over the last five years that is repeatedly cited in written parliamentary answers includes general neurological research, often with no tangible link to MND. The same analysis shows that funding of targeted MND research stands at less than 5 million annually, which is more in line with the 5 million allocated in 2019-20 that was detailed in the parliamentary answer of the 14th of January. Another passage says the government remains strongly committed to supporting research into dementia and neurodegeneration, including MND. Whilst funding into dementia research is much needed and very welcome, it is reported in about 5% of cases there's a family history of either motor neuron disease or a related condition called frontotemporal dementia. Frontotemporal dementia is just one of the many clinical features of MND. Yet, dementia features 10 times in the UK government's response to this petition. It is therefore understandable that the MND research community, who are all experts in their field, appear to be united in their assertion that MND should not be adjoined with dementia research. Therefore, I wholeheartedly agree with Amar al Chalabi, Professor of Neurological and Complex Disease Genetics at King's College, when he says it is no longer appropriate for MND to be tagged on to dementia research initiatives. Another passage in the response said the UK Dementia Research Institute has significant investment in MND research with a particular focus on the mechanisms that cause the disease. Again, this is positive. Can the Minister give details of the significant investment in MND research that is mentioned? Additionally, this statement talks of research focusing on causes of the disease, not treatments. So this is an area that needs to be focused on. This also supports the calls from the MND research community to target funding into MND research because they understand the substantial progress that has been made in establishing much of the basic science around MND and have identified the need to progress to, to research into the treatment. 
Another passage in the government response said the 2019 Conservative Manifesto committed to doubling funding for dementia research, including MND research, and the government is putting plans in place now to deliver this commitment. I checked the manifesto. There is no mention of MND or neurodegeneration, only dementia. Can the minister detail what the plans are specifically for MND and how much funding will be targeted towards MND research? In another passage, it says the government has been working to establish a rich ecosystem for neurodegeneration research in the UK. Significant elements are the UK Dementia Research Institute, Dementia's Platform UK, NIHR, Dementia Translational Research, Collaboration and Joint Dementia Research. Given that four dementia-related organisations are mentioned in a response to a petition calling for targeted research funding for MND, does the Minister accept that the lack of a pioneering MND research institute, which would attract targeted funding, remains a bar barrier to progress in finding effective treatments and a cure for MND? Another passage says, it's not usual practice to ring fence funding for particular topics or conditions. Yet it appears from the response that funding for dementia has been ring-fenced. Recent global efforts to find a vaccine for coronavirus and its involvement with numerous research institutes shows how quickly progress can be made when funding is ring-fenced for conditions. Also, it enabled the fast development of a vaccine. Those living with MND need fast development of an effective treatment and a cure because of the rapid progression of this disease. Considering recent scientific developments, the UK government's levelling up agenda and the current economic climate that puts charitable funding at risk, I believe the time is right to significantly increase targeted research funding for MND and invest 50 million over five years to kickstart a pioneering MND research institute. In conclusion, Mrs Cumming, the research for new therapies requires a truly multidisciplinary pan-national approach spanning the entire translational pathway, establishing a virtual MND translational research institute, which the petitioners call for, will, I believe, deliver this. There is no doubt that extra MND research funding from the UK government is needed to support effective patient treatment and the medicines and the hope that a cure for MND can be found soon, because that is what the petitioners and the sufferers of this disease need. Thank you. The question is that this House has considered e-petition 564582 relating to research into motor neuron disease. Um, in terms of timings, I'm looking for front bench speeches to start about 5.25, so if members could limit their contributions to between four and a half, five minutes, I'd be very grateful and we can get everybody in. John Lamont. Um, thank you, Mrs. Cummings. It's a, serve to, a pleasure to serve um, with you on, in the chair this afternoon. And I'm pleased to be um, taking part in the debate on this petition, which has attracted so much um, support from my own constituents in the Scottish Borders, with Berwickshire, Roxburgh, and Selkirk ranking second across the United Kingdom. Now, imagine that part of the reason for this is that Doddy Weir, founder of the My Name's Doddy Foundation, lives in the Scottish Borders. But Doddy Weir's impact extends far beyond the Scottish borders. In fact, the reason we are all here today for this debate is because the petition was launched by Doddy and the My Name's Doddy's Foundation. Now, Doddy is someone who I know well, and I can understand well why he has persuaded so many people to support his campaign and petition. Now, Doddy has faced his fair share of challenges on the rugby pitch and has a remarkable list of achievements to his name. 61 caps for Scotland, representing the British and Irish lines, and playing locally for Melrose as well. But Doddy has said on numerous occasions that the greatest challenge he has faced is off the pitch, battling motor neuron disease. In June 2017, Doddy revealed he was suffering from MND, and within months, he and his trustees launched the registered charity, the My Name's Doddy Foundation. The way that Doddy is driven to champion fellow sufferers, sufferers and research into this devastating, currently incurable disease is both ad admirable and inspiring. His selfless, selfless work has been vital in raising awareness and generating millions of pounds for such an important cause. Doddy and the Foundation have created huge momentum amongst individuals, 
sports clubs and other organisations to raise awareness and vital funding for MND research and support. Indeed, I was honoured to raise money for this cause running the London Marathon in 2018. Many other borderers have also completed challenges to raise money for the My Name's Doddy Foundation. Too many to mention in this short con contribution, but challenges like the Lions Trek for Doddy and the Coast to Coast in 24 Hours come to mind. And the Prime Minister also threw his support behind Doddy's active inter-district challenge, which raised over a million pounds. But at the crux of this debate is a devastating disease a rapidly progressing neurological condition. It leaves individuals unable to walk, talk, eat, and ultimately unable to breathe. One in 300 people will develop it in their lifetime, and a third of those will die within one year of receiving their diagnosis. The My Name's Doddy Foundation provides practical help through grants and funds research into this currently terrible, into this terrible disease. And the Foundation gives considerable sums to the MND Association and MND Scotland to provide support for individuals and their families living with motor neuron disease. Overall, the My Name's Doddy Foundation has raised more than £8 million since 2017. It has granted over £3 million to medical research projects and over £1 million has been given to grants to help sufferers, sufferers of MND. In March this year, when I asked the Prime Minister a question about funding for MND research in Prime Minister's questions, I was reassured to hear that the Government has spent £54 million in research over the last five years through the National Institute for Health Research and UK Research and Innovation. I am also glad that the Government is putting in place to, to, uh, plans to deliver its 2019 manifesto commitment to double funding for dementia research, which includes MND research. However, it is crucial that we redouble our efforts to consolidate the work that has been done. It is vital that governments across the UK, the research community and charities work together in the hope that we one day we can find a cure. Now, I want to close um, my remarks, Mrs Cummings, today by paying tribute to Doddy and the My Name's Doddy Foundation, MND Scotland and the MND Association. These are organisations that are dedicated to supporting sufferers of MND and their families and are relentlessly striving towards finding a cure for this horrible disease. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you, Mrs. Cummings. It's a pleasure to serve um, under, your, uh, under your chair. And um, like, like me, you will be well aware of the position of uh, Rob Burrow, the, uh, the, the former Leeds Rhino, um, player uh, uh, whose career as a rugby league player was was illustrious, but uh, who at the moment has, has lent his very strong support to the Duddy Wear campaign, to the campaign for more work to be done on motor neuron disease because of the devastating effect it's had on this one super athlete in reducing him now to someone who knows that um, he's he's uh, he's enjoying the last of his days on a kind of burrow time, not the way any super athlete would expect to end. But I also want to talk about the, the sheer humanity of uh, motor neuron disease. I've lost um, friends to this, this horrendous disease. Um, a very good friend of mine, Steve Mitchell, worked with me and uh, um, this, when I was the Police and Crime Commissioner, he was the Deputy Chief Executive at Manchester City Council, a sharp brain, a keen intellect, a very powerful runner. But when motor neuron disease struck him, it wasn't too long before that had a devastating effect on him. Um, it, because he was such a strong character, he did it, everything he could do to make sure life continued as normal. But when you lose the, the, the use of both arms and fall flat on your face, the consequences, in his case, he almost describes as comical. But of course, actually, it was about the loss of the capacity to do the things that had taken for granted over so long it's such a cruel disease another friend of mine whose wife said to, to me after he died um, actually death was a blessing he didn't want to live locked into a condition that simply left him at the mercy of his brain but not with the use of his body and that is the reality of, of MND and that's why this debate and this petition are so important because Mr. Cummings, we do need this research and I hope that the Minister 
will be able to give us some proper answers today. We do know when I talk to neuroscientists, they say actually they believe um, it is possible to find, if not a cure, at least um, uh, um, at least uh, pharmaceutical solutions that can take people forward on their MND journey. Um, but maybe um, something that does control MND into the longer run. The prospects are truly enormous. And whilst I thought the Honourable Member for Linlithgow and his folk had made a very good speech to open up this, this debate, one thing that is, is true, that, that yes, it is right and proper that the funding for MND be there in its own right, not simply linked to other neurodegenerative diseases. Nevertheless, the possibility of cracking the, the code for MND um, does give hope. Uh, so neuroscientists tell me that we can begin to look for cures, for solutions for other neurodegenerative diseases. Now, um, we know that a third of those who contract MND will be dead within the, in the year, and for others, the prospects are not good. The, maybe there are 5,000 people at any one time suffering from this disease. So £50 million pounds actually as an investment in stopping that kind of suffering makes human sense and societal sense in the end. It makes financial sense. It makes financial sense because if we invest now, if we can see this concentration of efforts, there is a possibility we can see the results very soon. It can be literally world advancing science. And this country has the neuroscientists, the research is capable of taking this forward. So I want to join very strongly with the, the demand of the e petition that we see this investment in the MND Translational Research Institute. It can make a material difference. It can stop the human suffering that MND causes now. That's worth spending some of our money on. Thank you. Barbara Keeley. Thank you, Ms Cummings, and I want to thank the Petitions Committee for arranging a debate on this important topic. We have seen during this pandemic the transformative impact which medical research can have. Whether it was creating vaccines on a timescale which was previously seen as impossible or in identifying effective and low cost treatments for people with COVID-19, the research community has saved millions of lives around the world during this pandemic. But the level of investment related to COVID-19 is not replicated for other conditions. We are discussing motor neuron disease today, which received only £3.5 million from the Medical Research Council in 2019-20 and no funding at all from the National Institute for Health Research. Now, as we heard earlier in the debate, the government has claimed that it invested £54 million over the last five years in MND research. But as the MND Association has found, much of this was spent on general neurological research rather than on MND specific programmes. Now, for a condition which has such a major impact on the lives of those people living with it, this is simply not good enough. Failing to invest in this research means condemning more people to go live on living with and eventually dying of motor neuron disease. And as we have heard in this debate, while there may only be 5,000 people living with MND at this time, this is not because it is rare. This is a condition which affects one in 300 people across their lifetime, but many of them will die within a year of diagnosis. And that means that without an effective treatment being developed, 200,000 people alive in Britain today will die from MND. Over the last year, we have rightly poured money into projects looking at COVID-19. We now need to use the advances we have made as an inspiration to prioritise medical research for a far wider range of conditions. One of the many reasons that motor neuron disease should be a priority is the insights it can give us into other neurological conditions. MND progresses rapidly which means we are able to pioneer and trial treatments on a realistic time frame, potentially opening the door to treatments for other conditions, such as Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, which are far slower to develop. Now, the ask from the motor neuron disease community is simply this, 50 million pounds for research spread over the next five years to develop an MND translational research institute. This comparatively modest investment has the potential to transform motor neuron disease and to make real progress to make MND treatable and to accelerate treatments for Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. Rather than investing in piecemeal projects, this funding could bring together a new central institute to oversee and coordinate a range of research into MND. And this would allow knowledge and breakthroughs to be shared widely, 
potentially accelerating our progress. Part of the government's life sciences vision is great healthcare challenges, including improving translational capabilities in neurodegeneration and dementia. And this is exactly what this proposal for an MND Translational Research Institute addresses. So I'd like to put this question to the Minister. Will she commit to increasing significantly the funding for MND research over the next five years and provide hope to everyone currently living with motor neuron disease? And as I finish Ms. Goins, I'd like to thank Greg Broadhurst and Alison Railton of the MND Association and all the campaigners who are raising awareness of this disease and supporting those living with it and their family carers. Steve Baker. Thank you, Mrs. Cummings. And I'm delighted to serve under your uh, chairmanship. And I'm grateful to the petitioners who signed this petition. Of course, the purpose of the petition is to seek to secure uh, an increase in targeted research funding for motor neurone disease with a new investment of £50 million over five years to kickstart a pioneering motor neurone disease research institute. So we don't need to stand here today and wonder how it could be done because I can hold in my hand this excellent proposal from the Motor Neurone Disease Association, my name's Doddy Foundation, and MND Scotland. This proposal for a UK motor neurone disease translational research institute is how we make progress but of course what it needs is the 50 million pounds over five years which colleagues have already spoken about now in Wickham about uh, I understand it's 185 of my constituents have signed the petition which closed on the 6th of July they of course would like progress and I would like progress that's why I'm here today to speak up for them We've heard already from colleagues who've spoken in, in advance that motor neurone disease is not rare, but it is devastating. It's the most common neurological disease, neuro, rather, neurodegenerative disease of midlife, and that is a sobering thought for those of us who've just turned 50. So I've joined with the My Name's Doddy Foundation and called on the government to invest this £50 million. And of course, £50 million is a large sum of money when viewed from the perspective of an individual, but taken over five years and viewed from the perspective of the government, it does seem to me that it is a reasonable sum to invest when progress could be so possible. I just turn to the charity's brief where they set out the opportunities, as they say. Despite limited investment, motor neurone disease is one of the fastest moving sectors in UK health and biomedical research. Current trials hold real promise of a licensed treatment in just two to three years for some forms of motor neurone disease. Counterintuitively, MND, with its relatively low prevalence, is incredibly valuable to research into the more common neurodegenerative diseases, such as the dementias. The very rapidity of MND progression makes it easier to pioneer and trial treatments in a realistic time frame. There is increasing interest from M in MND research from global pharmaceutical companies. The size of the MND market is not insignificant, but drug companies also see this as a route to the treatment markets for Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. I believe that, that paragraph really points to what could be possible here if the government is willing to find this sum of money for this research institute. And I'd implore ministers to make the case to the Treasury to do that, because what's needed is this significant cash injection to fund this virtual research institute. Now, I've had a number of exchanges uh, in letters and parliamentary questions with ministers, and I, I do think we need to be very clear that the £54 million pounds that is cited does uh, rely, it does, does take within it a broad spectrum of research. What is being asked for here is targeted research, specifically on MND. It's about getting this plan done. And I think it would be reasonable for ministers to ask, well, what would success look like? Well, I'm happy to say that on page 15, the proposal does set out what uh, uh, success will look like. And I'll just make these four points and then I'll close. First, that the Institute would maintain relentless progress uh, urgency through ensuring a continuous pipeline, a continuous pipeline of treatment candidates with at least 10 novel drug compounds prioritised into preclinical and early phase human studies by year five. I believe that would count as tremendous progress. Secondly, the deployment of an innovative new on-demand clinical trials platform. Third, learning rapidly from each and every trial, successful or not, through newly developed biomarkers. 
And fourth, and I think this is crucial, driving nothing short of a total revolution in the consultant-patient discussion, making sure that the offer of a trial of treatment would be the expectation from the very first consultation upon diagnosis as opposed to the exception, so that it would become part of every patient's care plan. Mrs Cummins, I think because of the particular characteristics of motor neuron disease and because of the particular sum involved and the nature of the proposal that has been made by the charities and everybody else involved, I really would implore the Minister to look very carefully at how this proposal can fit into the government's plans. We've just, we, I think we are still passing the bill for ARIA, the Research Institute. If we're not going to do this with this money, make this kind of progress this fast in people's interests, whatever are we passing that bill to do? So please do make this proposal. Rachel Maskell. Thank you, Mrs. Cummings, for chairing this afternoon's debate. And I also want to thank the petitioners. Uh, for their um, stealth in putting forward this petition today. I know that for many of them, it will be personal. For myself, as a clinician that works in neurology, I work with many people with motor neurons disease. I'm also a, a constituency MP who has supported my constituents. And my uncle, a, a radical academic in his day, sadly was lost to MND. And we know that one in 300 people are likely to have MND. And once diagnosed, of course, life passes all too quickly. So in opening, I want to put on record my thanks to all of those who have supported MND over the last year in what's been the most challenging of all years. The clinicians, the families, the carers, the MND association and the wider community. At times, it seemed that COVID-19 has been the only battle the NHS has had to face, but of course, with its dominance, it has compounded the challenges that others have had in other areas of medicine. And whilst we've seen so many miracles in the NHS over the last year, we're now calling for another miracle, and that is for the government's release, vital research funding. As clinicians, we want to do everything we can for our patients, and it is frustrating and stressful when we can see the solutions, but we don't have the means to deliver them. And as we have seen, when you really do put the investment in prevention and cure, it does provide hope, as our nation has been given that hope over COVID-19 by the brilliant scientists that have developed that vaccine. And therefore, we want to see that research leading to a new path for people with motor neurons disease. Of course, we understand that scale matters, and that is why so much focus has been given to the pandemic. But when a, th a third of a million people at any one time across the globe has motor neuron disease, we can see that scale is important here too. And as internationalists, we must look to working across borders to ensure we find the right science and solutions in medicine. At, at, to date, the cause is largely unknown, the cure yet to be found. And most research has been based on bettering uh, somebody's uh, prognosis, but also um, over a, a shorter period and enhancing the quality of life while they are able to hold on to it. And whilst um, government is one source of funding, uniquely in the UK, the charity sector funds medical research. It accounts for about 51% of all funding through the generous donations of 7 million people, research trusts and funds. It, was, it funds around 17,000 researchers in all. And we know that... Um, our research basis in the UK needs to be rethought through again. So we're not seeing Big Pharma just taking some of the, the resourcing and the long-term profits, but to ensure that we see that reinvestment into research, we see more money going into that area. Now, we know that back in 2014, MND did have a boost in its funding through the Ice Bucket Challenge, and uh, it certainly lifted research opportunities. However, this pandemic has had a significant chilling impact on medical research this last year, one we can ill afford, as research scientists have had to uh, find work elsewhere. And, there, and whilst charities themselves have had fundraising opportunities stopped in their shops, shut, we haven't seen government step in to support charities who obviously are at the back of all of this important medical research, not least in motor neurons disease. And therefore, the proposal to come forward with a bespoke £50 million fund over five years to invest 
in a specific research institute into MND, being a, putting the UK as a global leader yet again is so important for all of us. And therefore, I urge the Minister to seriously consider this proposal, not least as the uh, medical, the Association of Medical Research Charities came together earlier last year and made a proposal for a, a life science charity partnership fund, 310 million invested over a three year period in order to just address the deficit they've experienced during the pandemic. Government have not come up with the resources in order to meet that challenge, which is grossly disappointing. And therefore, I trust that this proposal before us today will be acknowledged. Because for every pound invested, there is a 25 pence life term return in benefit. And when you compare this with other investments made by government, this far outstrips the value which it can bring. And if we see that health and science and development and research is a major industry of the UK, then of course valued um, investment in that research will bring that long-term economic benefit as well as real personal benefit for those involved. So as we have our melting pot of research to enable world-class research to move forward and innovation here, I trust that the Minister will respond positively and bring real hope to the thousands of families who need to know that hope is on the horizon. So David Amis. I congratulate the Honourable Member for uh, Lynn Nithgow and East Falkirk on the way he introduced this debate and agree with all the points which he made. Now, I don't have the expertise that the Honourable Member for York has in this area, but uh, there are a number of points I wish to make, mainly on behalf of a friend of mine. Uh, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence uh, says that most people with the disease, as we've already heard, will die within two to three years of developing uh, symptoms, with only 25% alive at five years and just 10% alive after 10 years. And I certainly appreciate that after the global pandemic, the minister who will be replying to the debate has many calls on her time. But of course, many of these illnesses existed before the coronavirus pandemic. They still do now. They have to be dealt with. Now, a local South End guest host owner, who happens to be a friend of mine, was having to work 12 hours a day to financially recover from the first lockdown, but developed problems with his left hand and leg. Physiotherapy didn't help, and pain spread to the entire left hand side of his body. An appointment was made with a neurologist, and it revealed that he had motor neurone disease, and only um, two to four years to live. He is not able to work anymore and is having difficulties in obtaining financial support. This upsetting story about my friend, unfortunately, is replicated throughout the country. Relevant up-to-date information about symptoms and how to check for motor neuron disease, I believe, should be widely accessible and discussed at hospitals with relevant communities to raise awareness of the disease. Furthermore, People living with terminal illness often die before they get the benefits they need, which is ridiculous. I'm very pleased that the government has announced that they will reform the benefit system for terminally ill people. I hope this is done with a matter of urgency, so patients and their families do not have to spend their valuable time battling for uh, financial support. The best way to treat a disease and to find a cure is to fully understand it. And so specific research, as we've already heard, targeted at motor neuron disease and not just general neurological conditions is very much needed. Increasing government funding from less than five million annually to 50 million pounds annually, I know it's a lot of money over five years, would not only help to fund a new research institute, but it would discover, uh, help us discover effective treatments and save the government in terms, as we've already heard, of health care, social care and benefits in the long run. If we pioneer the way in motor neurone disease research, it would truly put our country on the map again at the forefront of international scientific and medical discovery. Now, I was delighted to sign my honourable friend, the member for Northampton South's letter to the Minister of State for Social Care, asking for more investment from the government in specific motor neurone disease research. This is much needed and also will benefit neurovegetative diseases such as the dementias. 
I recently asked the Leader of the House of Commons at Business Questions to find time for a debate for research into motor neurone disease. In his answer, I was told that our 2019 manifesto committed to doubling funding for dementia and neurodegenerative uh, disease research. I hope this is done urgently and that research into motor neurone disease receives its fair share. In conclusion, this is Cummings, one in 300 people will develop motor neurone disease in their lifetime and there is currently no cure. This is not a small percentage of our population. We really do need more investment and I do hope that our minister will commit to that. Ian Byrne. Thank you, Chair. It is an honour to serve under your chairship and thank you to the member from Lithgow and East Falk here for introducing this important petition to the House. I'd like to start today by thanking the 110,700 people, including 225 of my constituents in Liverpool, West Derby, who have signed a petition and campaign for an increase in much needed funding for urgent research into motor neurone disease. And by paying tribute to constituents in West Derby who have been diagnosed with motor neurone disease and to their families and friends. The petition has one clear ask for the new investment by the government of £50 million over five years to kickstart a pioneering MND research institute. This call is based on the assessments made by the Motor Neurone Disease Association, MND Scotland and My Name's Doddy Foundation. The government claims in their response to the petition that they have spent £54 million on MND research over the last five years, but analysis from the Motor Neurone Disease Association shows that this figure includes general neurological research, often with no tangible link to motor neurone disease. So I do urge the Minister to come back with the package of targeted support that is needed. I wanted to speak today about a friend and con uh, constituent, Mark Maddox, and his fight against motor neurone disease. Now his way exposed myself to the heartbreaking impact it can have. And I will do everything I can to assist in this campaign moving forward. I first met Mark a decade ago when I helped to coach his youngest son's football team. He will laugh watching this at my word, coached. He was diagnosed with motor neurone disease in 2010, and it was my first experience of the disease and the impact it had on him, his family and friends. Mark is an absolute legend of the local football scene, both in Liverpool and a legend at Olsengham Football Club, where between 1996 and 2006, he made 349 appearances as a tough tackling captain and centre-half. The bravery in which he's tackled the disease was hewn from this background. After being diagnosed with motor neurone disease, he ran three marathons, skydives, bike rides. He released a music album, and in 2011, Mark fronted a nationwide campaign to every football league in the country and reached over two million people through matchday programmes. He also appeared on... Manchester United TV, despite being a huge Liverpool fan, BBC North West, various radio stations, as well as LFC TV, making a mini documentary about Mark. It was all done to raise awareness and funds for the campaign to fight this cruel disease. Mark was told a diagnosis he would be lucky to live beyond the year, and that was 11 years ago. Mark believes that the love support he receives from his family, friends, his wife in particular, and often complete strangers, has helped him to get through to this day today. But over the last decade, Mark has become increasingly frustrated with the lack of understanding the government has for people with motor neurone disease and their families, and the devastating effects it has on them. He wants change. So to finish, I urge the Minister to listen to Mark and the many, many other people who've been diagnosed with motor neurone disease and say no more. Motor neurone disease stopped Mark achieving great things in football and with world-leading UK scientists on the cusp of major breakthroughs in motor neurone disease research, we need a commitment from the government for a vital increase in the funding that will accelerate the discovery of treatments. To pledge the funding needed to kickstart a pioneering motor neurone disease research institute and together we can work to end motor neurone disease so people diagnosed like Mark and countless others can fulfil their potential. Thank you, Chair. Christine Jardine. 
Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairman. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. And like others, I would like to, to thank the Honourable Member for Linlithgow and Falkirk East for bringing this um, debate today and for the meticulous, detailed and caring, if I may say so, way he laid out exactly the, the statistics and what motor neurons disease means to, to so many people in this country because the statistics are frightening. One in 300 of us, as we've heard, can um, be struck by motor neurons disease in our lifetimes. But because it claims life so rapidly, we are never, as a society, fully aware of its impact, of the number of lives disrupted, families torn apart, the suffering in our own communities. And I'm sure many of us, as has already been mentioned, have experienced that trauma. The trauma of watching someone we know, someone we love, fighting the debilitating, progressive, and ultimately always, at this point in time, fatal effects of motor neurons disease. And like others, I would also like to pay tribute to all of those who have done so much to bring this debilitating condition to public attention and raise this petition. Almost 400 people in my constituency of Edinburgh West have signed it. But I know that many, many more of them are aware and determined that we should make a difference. Many of them, because my constituency is also the home of Scottish rugby, of Murrayfield, the site of many of Doddy Weir's on-field achievements, which for my generation, the sound, the sight of seeing him on a rugby field or hearing his name in the commentary was reassurance that um, Scottish rugby was in, in safe hands. And I say on-field because surely, sadly, the work he is doing to raise awareness, his campaign for other people, his campaign for research, is also a magnificent achievement. But it surely should not be left to those who are battling the condition to come up with a solution. We have already heard that just £5 million a year is targeted at motor neuron disease research, and it's that word, targeted. We know that there is general neurological research, but we need to know more about this specific condition itself. And that is why it is so important that we have this £50 million investment over five years to establish the Virtual Motor Neuron Disease Translational Research Institute and consolidate the UK's position as a global leader in neurological disease research. We have also heard that research into motor neurons could open the door on other conditions. And there are practical implications, financial implications, for society and for the NHS of being able to relieve people of this burden. But I think, in, in closing, I would just like to say that the Motor Neuron Disease Association, MND Scotland, and the My Name's Doddy Foundation, who have jointly submitted a bid to government for this year's spending review, are undertaking a, a task, a crusade almost, for so many people in this country who are struck by this cruelest of conditions. And I would appeal to the government that £50 million over five years is not a lot in monetary terms, but it could be so much in terms of progress against this disease. John McDonnell. Thanks. Of course, I echo the thanks to the Honourable Member for in this East Falkirk. Uh, he eloquent way he introduced this, this debate, and I'll try and be as brief as possible so everyone can get in. I want to just address my remarks to the Minister directly because I think the Minister's heard why we're here. Yes, it's because <clears throat> over 100 of my constituents signed the petition, but quite a few of them, including myself, have had experience of motor neuro disease affecting either family or friends and the brutal, savage condition that it is but also actually you meet people all the way along the road in this, in this dealing with this dreadful condition. And they all, they all work on the basis that there will be light at the end of the tunnel. And the light at the end of that tunnel that we see now is research. Now I, like others, I've been using the government's figure of 54 million pounds investment 
didn't not realizing that actually it was only five million directly targeted. And the sense I get from people at the moment and the associations and the charities that are working in this field is actually there's a sense of optimism that we could be close to a breakthrough in identifying you know, the predict, the prevent, the treat and the cure of this condition. And the sense I get is just that little bit more money distributed effectively and invested wisely could tip us over the edge in tackling this condition. So I just say to the minister, the problem that we face at the moment is this fragmenting funding sources, the lack of certainty and predictability about the scale of investment that will really help us to bring the science together and actually tackle this issue effectively. And it, I, we will assist the minister in the lobby of the treasury. We're at that stage in the spending review process when the departmental bids are going in, the hard negotiations are well underway, and we will help you, Minister, in these negotiations. Because this, this investment, not only do we believe actually we're on the cusp of this breakthrough, but it actually chimes with everything that's been said by the Prime Minister, by the Chancellor, and by successive Secretaries of Health, about how we need to invest in life sciences, how we link with the pharmaceutical industry, and how in that way we become world leaders. And I actually say in the context of the overall spending review, this is not a great deal of money to be asking for on such a critical issue, which affects so many of our constituents and affects so many of their families in a heartbreaking way. So I just say to the Minister very, very briefly, we will support you all we can in your submission on this matter. The 50, the 50 million we're talking about over a five year period is a drop in the ocean in comparison to some investments that are going in on other conditions. But I think many of us believe very, very clearly now we're on the edge of something big here that could again chime in with what the Prime Minister has been saying about how we could be world leaders in the fields of life science research in this way. So I urge, I urge the Minister to take on board everything that's been said today by this cross-party group of members. But behind us, literally, hundreds of thousands of people now are looking to the government for this small step forward that could provide us with such an immense breakthrough. Thank you, Chair. Anam Kwasar Javed. Thank you, Mrs Cummings. It is a pleasure to serve under your chairship. I welcome this petition and thank each and every person who has signed and shared it. This is democracy in action. I'll start by reiterating the comments made by my colleague, the member for Linlithgow in East Falkirk, that extra research funding is absolutely essential to support patient treatment and medicines in the hope that a cure for MND can be found soon. The work carried out by organisations and charities such as the MND Association and MND Scotland has ensured that MND research is at the forefront of political debate, and quite rightly so. I also want to reiterate the comments um, made by my colleague, the member for Berwickshire, Roxburgh and Selkirk, that the work done by My Name's Doddy Foundation goes beyond the constituency he represents and where Doddy lives. Of course, it's important that we also acknowledge that there's um, 1,100 1, people across the UK who have been diagnosed with MND. And it's thought that the diseases related to motor neurons affect approximately 5,000 adults at any one time. Today, we have heard from colleagues across the political spectrum, Unite Chair. Each and every one of us has gained an understanding of how debilitating MED can become, and that whilst research into this life-limiting illness continues, we recognise that additional funding is absolutely required to further advance the ambitions of experts who believe that getting a cure is becoming closer than ever. As the member for Edinburgh West stated, the numbers are frightful, Chair. After developing symptoms, most people with MND will die within two to three years. 
After five years, around 25% of people live. And this reduces to 10% at 10 years. Any additional funding in research will be vital in extending life after diagnosis and along with improving the quality of life by slowing down the aggression of the disease. And whilst today we are discussing research and funding specifically, they cannot be seen as isolated factors, Chair. There are clear links between research, investment and the standards of palliative care. Ensuring that this is up to standards to improve the quality of life with those with MND, whilst research continues to develop. As the member for Wickham stated, Chair, we need progress and targeted support. On a personal level, I remember scrolling through Twitter back in 2014 and seeing politicians unite in the middle of a hotly contested referendum on Scottish independence, unite in their support for MND research. Gordon Aikman was diagnosed with MND and he was the director of research for the Better Together campaign and had previously worked for the Labour Party. I want to pay tribute to Gordon today because I was always in awe of him, Chair. I never knew him, I'd never met him, but I always felt a strong sense of resilience from him. His campaign was fearless and forceful and exactly what was needed to put MND high on the agenda. He champions more investment along with research into MND and general awareness of the disease. And campaigns, Chair, have been absolutely vital in raising awareness of MND. The Scottish public raised £500,000 in the Ice Bucket Challenge. UK-wide, over £7 million was raised and over $100 million was raised worldwide through this challenge. Challenges like these may seem trivial, however, the impact is profound, along with raising incredible sums of money and awareness is also generated. And this is commendable, Mrs Cummings. However, we cannot rely on the generosity of the public and internet trends to ensure that the UK is leading the way in pioneering research for a devastating disease. In Scotland, the government is committed to ensuring that neurological patients can access the care, support and information they need that also enables them to understand their condition following diagnosis. Between 2015 and 2018, the Scottish Government committed more than £700,000 for research into motor neuron disease. And additionally, in 2019, around £400,000 was invested over three years to fund two postdoctoral posts at the UK Dementia Research Institute at the University of Edinburgh to research and develop new treatments for MND. Recent University of Edinburgh research found a problem with MND patients' nerve, nerve cells, which could be repaired by repurposing drugs approved for other diseases. The research found that the damage to nerve cells caused by MND could be repaired by improving the energy levels in mitochondria, the power supply to the motor neurons. In fact, Chair, they discovered that in human stem cell models of MND, that the axon, which is the long part of the motor neuron cell that connects to the muscle, was shorter than in healthy cells. And the movement of the mitochondria, which travel up and down the axons, was repaired, was impaired, sorry. The scientists showed that this was caused by a defective energy supply from the mitochondria, and that by boosting the mitochondria, the axon reverted to normal. Although the research focused on the people with the most common genetic cause of MND, the researchers said they were hopeful that the results would also apply to other forms of the disease. The results of the study are now being used to look at existing drugs that boost mitochondrial function. Chair, the member of, for York Central spoke about an international approach in tackling MND. The results from the University of Edinburgh show which, what can be achieved in a single research centre. The MND research strategy now needs to move beyond single centres or small collaborations to answer narrow research questions towards a large scale coordinated approach tackling every aspect of the translational pathway with the multidisciplinary expertise available nationally and internationally to find to rapidly find and develop new effective therapies for MND. 
As the member for Linlithgow and East Falkirk stated, the search for new therapies requires a truly multidisciplinary pan-national approach spanning the entire translational pathway. Establishing a virtual MND translational research institute, which the petitioners have called for, will deliver this. We must also note, Chair, that researchers have developed a line of thinking that suggests that by delivering a cure in one neurological disease may in fact open the possibility to effective treatment for others. This is because the disease processes are closely linked. As the member for Rochdale has called for, any additional funding provided by the UK government um, results in an increase not only in MND investment, but may also contribute to tackling other neurological diseases. Does the minister recognise this and will she commit to action and not simply words? The UK government should also follow the lead in the Scottish government when it comes to universal free prescriptions. Whilst we are specifically discussing research and investment, we must also bear in mind that around one in every 300 people across all communities will develop MND in their lifetime. It's not an age-specific illness and people will experience different circumstances in the early stages of MND. The governmental support available must not systematically target those who have this debilitating illness. And pre-prescriptions are just, just one way in which we can improve the quality of life for those who have been diagnosed with MND, whilst research is still ongoing. Will the Minister commit to consideration of this? There is no doubt, Chair, that extra MND research funding from the UK government is needed to support effective patient treatment and medicines in the hope that a cure for MND can be found soon. As the member for Worsley and Eccles noted, over the last year, we have poured money into the pandemic. And as we look forward, additional funding and MND research will transform the lives of people. May I conclude, Chair, by noting that members today have contributed in an eloquent manner. Many have spoken from personal experiences, such as the members for Liverpool, West Derby, South End West, and Hayes and Harlington, respectively. I therefore hope to hear a positive contribution from the Minister and real actional commitment from the UK government to help transform MND research. Shadow Minister Liz Kendall. Thank you, and it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship, Mrs Cummings. I want to thank the over 110,000 people who signed this petition, including 49 from my own constituency of Leicester West. And I also want to thank the Motor Neuron Disease Association, my name, name's Doddy Foundation, and MND Scotland for their tireless campaigning on this really important issue. All honourable members have spoken very powerfully and personally about the scale and impact of this uh, disease, including on their constituents, friends and colleagues. And whilst those who suffer from this disorder face a very fearful future at the moment, I believe that there is a real opportunity here and that if we seize it, we can transform people's lives for the better, but that we have to deal with the significant and fundamental challenges within the existing funding model for research. We have got to move beyond these sort of single centres and small collaborations to a large scale, international, collaborative and coordinated approach. We know from experience that that is how you get fundamental change and that's what we're calling for today. And I suppose the case that I want to make is not that this funding should be provided and this model should be adopted um, simply because of the moral case uh, to stop appalling human suffering, although that is clear and unequivocal. It's that I think that supporting this proposal should be part, a main part, of how we seek to build back a better country after COVID-19 that draws on the world-class strengths of this amazing country in our science, in our research, using for the potential of the NHS for clinical trials. And that, that can not only uh, lead 
to new drugs and treatments that will transform the lives of people with MND, their families, and also potentially those with dementia and other conditions, but that it will help create the high-quality, high-skilled jobs we need so that we have an economy that is fit for the future. So let me say this case, I think, it is based on, on three areas. Firstly, we know that the economic case for funding this sort of research and investment will ensure that if patients get earlier diagnosis and better treatment and are kept stable earlier on uh, in that condition, that delivers better value for money because we know how expensive, up to nine times more expensive, those later treatments are in the late stage for MND. So firstly, investment in this will help deliver better value for money ultimately. Secondly, we have real opportunities here uh, for the UK research and pharmaceutical sector as MND, as many honourable members have said, is one of the fastest growing sectors in, the, in UK health and biomedical research. If that is the case, we should be trying to turbocharge that research and development and give it the backing from the broad range of public, private and charitable research funding. That is a huge strength in this com uh, country, that mixed economy approach. And in MND, we need to build on that. And thirdly, whilst everybody here has rightly said this debate is about having very specific funding for research into MND, we do know that there may be very valuable results out of this for advances in treatment in other degenerative disorders like dementia, which is um, a huge issue facing this country. What now needs to happen? I don't need to repeat what honourable members have said, uh, but we do need to bring this together into an MND research institute to implement rigorous clinical uh, research programmes, uh, sustainable MND trials programmes linking up with the NHS, to provide infrastructure to accelerate treatments and bring them to market in a partnership between our research and industry and to lead uh, support world-leading drug uh, discoveries and development. So can I ask the Minister, uh, if she hasn't all, uh, already, will she meet those involved in this sector, from the uh, medical research charities, the universities and the industries, bring them together alongside her colleagues from Bayes and the Treasury, because we need a cross-government approach on this, to go through the proposal in detail, to look at the value for money as well as the patient outcomes it would develop. Secondly, can I ask her, and this was a point my honourable friend from York absolutely rightly made, Will she also, if she hasn't already, uh, meet with the Association of Medical Research Charities? Because we know all medical research charities during the pandemic have seen their income slashed. And we really need to have a plan to get that research going again. As my honourable friend from York said, um, the Association of Medical Research Charities have proposed a life sciences charity partnership fund so that all the research that is done, the skills, the knowledge, the people, the expertise, doesn't go to waste because of the pandemic, but that we get this back on track. Let me end where I began, uh, Mrs Cummins. If we want to build back a better country after this pandemic, we need to think differently uh, and work differently rather than in the same old ways. We are world leading in science, research uh, and the pharmaceutical sector. And alongside our NHS, with the potential that leads to clinical trials, it is a no-brainer that this is an area we should focus on. So I ask the Minister uh, to uh, raise her eyes and her sights and her mind to think about all the potential this could, could bring for the people who suffer and their families, but also the life sciences where Britain is and should continue to lead in future. Thank you. Minister. Thank you, Mrs Cummins, and it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. I would like to begin by thanking the Honourable Member for Linlithgow and East Falkirk, and by congratulating the petitioners for securing this important debate. I pay particular tribute to the petitioners and to the charities MND Association, MND Scotland, and the My Name's Doddy Foundation for leading the campaign that has brought us here today. I'd also like to thank all honourable members who have spoken so powerfully today, sharing the stories of people suffering from this cruel disease. 
and adding their voices to the petitioners' campaign. This petition was started in the name of Doddy Weir, the Scottish rugby legend, who has been an inspirational figurehead campaigning for a world free of MND since he revealed in 2017 that he was suffering from the disease himself. I had the good fortune to meet Doddy virtually and others with MND at a recent round table event and I too was inspired by their campaign for a brighter future for people living with MND. Doddy's charity My Name's Doddy Foundation works tirelessly to raise funds for research into a cure and to provide grants to people living with MND. And I express my immense gratitude to Doddy and to everyone living with MND for giving their voices to this campaign and sharing their experiences of this awful disease and their hopes for the future. I know that there will be people living with MND listening to this debate today, looking for hope. And it is to them and to the over 100,000 people who stand in solidarity with them that I address my remarks. MND is a brutal condition that has a devastating impact on those who are diagnosed and their families and loved ones. As the petition has highlighted, MND can progress very rapidly and tragically there's currently no effective treatment or a cure. We still don't know exactly what causes motor neurons to die off. While a small percentage of cases are genetic, the majority of people with MND have no family history of the disease and there is only one drug treatment for MND that may slow the disease progression for some people. Yet the lifetime risk of developing MMD is as high as 1 in 300 people. We are making great strides in research, which I will talk about shortly, but we still have a way to go in our research to understand the disease mechanisms and identify effective treatments. Before I address that progress and our plans to accelerate MND research, I first want to speak about how the government is currently supporting people with MND. Through specialised services delivered by the NHS, people with MND are receiving treatment and support to ease their symptoms and support their continued independence for as long as possible. That includes the prescribing of complex communication devices to help people with MND communicate as effectively as possible, offering non-invasive ventilation to support respiratory function and delivering personal care and support for the needs of the individual. In 2019, the National Neuro Advisory Group published a toolkit for improving care for progressive neurological conditions, including MND. And this toolkit is helping commissioners improve the pathways for people with MND, enabling quicker, more accurate diagnoses, services which are coordinated, flexible and responsive to the rapidly changing needs of the patient, and improved choice in end-of-life care for people with MND. This is so that people with MND receive the best possible care. However, whilst the NHS is delivering that specialised treatment and support to people with MND, we know that this is not the same as a cure. In recent years, researchers have made major advances in our understanding of MND. For example, we now know more about the types of MND which have a genetic cause, for which gene, share, for which gene therapy might be an effective treatment. While this only accounts for around 10% of people with MND, and we still need treatments for the remainder, this is an important development. Researchers are also making progress in the development of the MND register and MND biobanks, data resources which are aiding researchers in understanding the disease. Through the development of novel biomarkers, scientists have more effective ways to monitor responses to treatment in clinical trials. And through innovative and flexible trial designs, researchers are able to conduct faster and cheaper trials which will deliver potential new treatments to patients more quickly. And I can assure honourable members here today that this government is committed to a supporting research into MND. I have heard the request from campaigners for government to invest 50 million to create an MND research institute, and I understand why petitioners are asking for this. However, ring fencing funding for particular diseases can stop great science and that is why the government makes funding available for researchers in all areas to apply to. Awards are granted in open competition and determined by the quality of the science. Through these funding mechanisms the government is supporting a wide range of research into MND. In 2019-20 UK research and innovation through the Medical Research Council spent 16 million on MND research. 
This included research which aims to increase understanding of both the causes and genetic mechanisms of both MND and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, a form of MND. For example, at the UK Dementia Research Institute, scientists are working to increase understanding of the root causes of ALS and frontotemporal dementia and identify ways to protect brain cells from damage. There is significant overlap in the genetic causes of MND and some types of dementia, which is why the Dementia Research Institute, funded in partnership with Alzheimer's Research UK and Alzheimer's Society, has made significant investments in MND research. At the Francis Crick Institute, which is co-funded by the Medical Research Council, Wellcome and Cancer Research UK, researchers are working with stem cells to investigate the earliest molecular events of MND. And with the Department of Health and Social Care Support, the National Institute for Health Research, NIHR, is directly funding MND research. For instance, the Lighthouse 2 study, a clinical trial of a drug repurposed from the treatment of HIV. This study, involving 300 people with MND, will test the effectiveness of the repurposed drug in improving survival rate, function, and quality of life for people with MND. We should keep going. Yeah, sure. I'm grateful to the Minister outlining all the various pieces of research that are being done. The benefit that will be brought by a virtual research institute, however, will be the coordination to ensure that there is a real focus that is brought to bring about real resolution for people with MND. Having a piecemeal approach will not bring about that real focus that is required. Will she recognise that and therefore reflect on the ability to bring forward a proposal for the comprehensive spending review in the autumn? Well, I thank my honourable friend for uh, her point. Um, and I will come to say a bit more about that, and I do assure her I absolutely hear the argument. I just want to, because I'm addressing as I go uh, some of the uh, comments and questions from honourable members during the debate, one of which was uh, for some examples of research. Um, I just mentioned one. There are a couple more that I want to cover. So at the NIHR Sheffield Biomedical Research Centre, researchers are trialling the safety and efficacy of a drug called Tudka, as a treatment for people with ALS. And the NIHR is also funding research to enhance support and care for people with MND with ongoing studies looking at nutrition and diet and therapies to improve psychological health. Over the past five years, the government has spent almost 60 million on research into MND and we're currently working on ways to boost this research even further. Now the member for Linlithgow and East Falker and other colleagues also have asked about uh, the total figure of nearly 60 million over the five year period 2015 16 to 2019 20. And this figure includes research funded by the government, both through NIHR and UKRI. That includes research funded uh, focused solely on MND, but also research on MND and frontotemporal dementia, uh, wh whose causes and mechanisms have a substantial overlap with MND and research on neurodegenerative conditions that have many commonalities with MND, plus spend on research infrastructure within NIHR supporting MND studies. So I hope that provides some greater clarity on uh, that research spending. I should say that in addition to this, the government funds research on the structure of the nervous system, cell biology and genetics, and mental processes like learning and memory, and UKRI supports this with around 30 million of funding per annum. Would you allow me? Would you uh, allow me yes, I'm going to. I'm very grateful to my honourable friend, the Minister. Um, I'm listening to you with great interest, and of course, it's slightly beyond my capabilities in biological science to really follow the relative merits of these di different programmes, much as I try. But could I invite her to meet with the proponents of this research proposal? Because they do compare, if I may say so, business as usual with this particular proposal. And it, can I just invite her to meet with the proponents of it so that she can hear directly from them what advantages could be gained from doing this? Well, I am, I'd be delighted to meet with the, uh, with the pr proposers. Um, I was actually just coming on to talk about a recent round table that I hosted uh, together with N the NIHR Sheffield Biomedical Research Centre which indeed focused specifically on boosting MND research, which brought together researchers, charities, people with MND and funders to indeed consider ways that we could boost research into MND. 
and government officials are working with those who attended uh, that round table to take that forwards and um, encourage and support MND research proposals. Um, I should say, I mean, to the particular point about the research uh, institute, um, I mean, the, the, the position on that and the argument on that uh, is, is that applications for funding for research infrastructure, just like, in fact, research itself, can and should be made to NIHR or UKRI as appropriate, and like other bids, can win funding through that process, and that process includes peer review and evaluation. Now, I you know, believe from today's debate, clearly, that a very strong case for this is being made. I am indeed happy to um, have the meeting that my uh, honourable friend has, uh, has proposed there, and I can assure all those listening that the government is working with MND charities and researchers on ways we can boost research. I would like to end by again thanking the petitioners for bringing this issue to the forefront today. MND has an enormous impact on individuals and families, and I pay tribute to everyone Before across the country who is supporting people diagnosed yeah. with the condition and the incredible and life-changing research that is being undertaken. This government is committed to working together with the MND community to catalyse further investment and to accelerate progress so that one day we will achieve a world free from MND. Martin Day to wind up. Thank you, Mrs Cummings. May I thank the members who have taken part today, and I trust the Minister will have seen a considerable degree of both consensus and urgency. Given the quick progression of MND, sufferers simply don't have the time to wait, and urgent action is needed to give them hope, and they need that hope now. The ask is relatively modest in the grand scheme of things, especially given 200,000 current UK citizens will die from this appalling disease if nothing is done. To, to misquote slightly Doddy himself, I would say it's time to crack on with it, and I hope the Minister will bear that in mind. The question is that this House has considered e-petition 564582 relating to the research into motor neuron disease. As many as are of that opinion say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Order, order. The sitting is suspended now until 6.15. Please will members leave the room promptly by the exit door on the left whilst observing social distancing. Thank you.